There we go. Sorry about that. Sorry about that. Amen. So let's look, first of all, at an insignificant meaning. Did you know that over the last 2,020 years that Christmas has become one of the most popular holidays in the entire world? Not just in America, not just in Western culture, in all of the world. The only holiday that is celebrated in the world more than Christmas is anybody? New Year's. New Year's. The entire world, obviously, whether they believe in God, whatever religion they are, they all celebrate New Year's. Other than that, Christmas is the most celebrated holiday in the world. Now think about that for a moment and ponder that because that should not be. That's actually a very odd thing if you think about it. Why? Because the Bible tells us that the world is going to hate and despise Jesus Christ. That the further time goes on, the more the world will hate him and despise him and reject him until it finally comes to a point where God says enough and comes and brings judgment on the earth. So why would a holiday celebrating the very person that the world hates and despises, why would it continue to grow and grow and grow and be celebrated all over the world? John says in uh, John 3, 19, the light has come into the world and men love the darkness rather than the light. Uh, Jesus says in John 15, 18, if the world hates you, you know that it has hated me before it hated you. So is the world becoming more accepting of Jesus? Was the Bible wrong? Was Jesus wrong? Is the world embracing it? And all over the world right now, the world is just embracing and loving. A Savior has been born. No. The world is not becoming more accepting of Christ. It's quite the contrary. The world is not becoming more Christ-like. The world is becoming more carnal more sinful. The world is becoming more hostile towards Jesus Christ, exactly as he predicted. So why are we celebrating his birth more and more? The reality is that we are not celebrating the birth of Christ. We're celebrating Christmas. Wait, I thought that was the same thing. No, it's not. It has become two completely and entirely different things. The world doesn't have a problem with Christmas. We love Christmas. We have a problem with Christ. Over the years, the holiday itself has become more important than the actual meaning of the holiday. We continue to celebrate it and embrace it and love it and look forward to it with joy in our hearts with little to no understanding of what it is that we're celebrating or why we're celebrating it. How often is that topic actually touched on or talked about? How often during the Christmas holiday season do we teach our children what Christmas actually is? How much more time do you suppose is spent talking about, encouraging, and teaching about Santa Claus to our children in comparison to talking about and teaching our children about the birth of Jesus Christ? What do you suppose that skew looks like? I don't have a problem with Santa. Whatever. It's cute. Kids like it. But not at the expense of what and why I'm celebrating. I actually like um, uh, Dwight Schrute's version of Santa much better. What's his name? What's the name? Oh, it, 
I shouldn't even brought it up because now I can't think of it. It is a uh, Dutch version of it, and he's dirty and disgusting and mean and really funny. It, there's no office fans in here, huh? I'll convert you guys one day. Bell Snickle. Bell Snickle. Bell Snickle, which I thought was a joke. It was in the show, but you look it up. It's a real thing. It is a real thing, Bell Schnickel, and he's dirty and disgusting, and he hits people, and uh, I just love that version of, of Santa Claus. If you're naughty, he doesn't just take you off the list. He whips you, and it's great. Yes. See, it has become less and less about Jesus and more and more about culture, more and more about tradition. The birth of Jesus Christ, think about this for a moment because this is where it really bothers us. The birth of Jesus is no longer the core and central meaning of Christmas to the world as a whole. It's not. It's absolutely not. Most of the world is satisfied and happier, in fact, with the new modern interpretation of Christmas. It's not controversial. It doesn't upset anyone. It doesn't bother anyone. In fact, you know the reality is during the holiday season, during our family celebrations, the topic of Jesus will most likely not be discussed or brought up by most families. It'll never be mentioned. It'll never be brought up. And if it is brought up, it will upset people. It'll bother people. It'll make them uncomfortable. If you find any joy in tormenting your family, when you go to your secular family's Christmas uh, holiday this season, just bring up how joyous it is that Jesus has been born and just look at the uncomfortable mad faces that look at you. And it's funny, but the look you will get is how dare you bring religion into our holiday and ruin the holiday dinner. Wait, what? And you think I'm joking, I'm not. So when it is talked about, it, was, it will usually be filled with empty words, platitudes, meaningless euphemisms. We will say all the right things. Oh, joy to the world! The light has come! Peace on earth! Goodwill towards men! But you know, when you think about it, we will say all of those things with a complete and total avoidance of who it is that brings the joy, of who brings the light, of who brings peace on earth and goodwill towards men. Completely void of it. I mentioned it a week or so ago that my family had pulled up a Christmas station and they were listening to Christmas music for two, three, four hours while they were making cookies and, and uh, I think it was while they were actually cooking Thanksgiving dinner and they were making fudge and cookies and dressing and everything and we were decorating the tree and uh, uh, listening to Christmas music on a, on a station and this and that and the other and, and it aggravated me so much more and more and more and more not because they were happy, even though I don't like to see my children happy. <laughs> but because song, Christmas song after Christmas song after Christmas song after Christmas song, two, three, four hours of it nonstop, there was, and, and after a while, I was tuned in on it. I was looking for it. There was not a single, not one single Christmas song that had a thing to do with Jesus. Not even in a veiled hidden meaning. None. Every one was about let it snow, Santa's coming, joy to the world. I know I don't think that one was in there. Not a single one. Not even a veiled hint or meaning about Jesus Christ in a single one of those songs. And I got aggravated about it. 
And then my family got aggravated at me because I was aggravated at them for listening to that. And it was terrible. How can you sing three, four hours of Christmas songs and not a single one have anything to do with Jesus? Let's look secondly at an insignificant event. You know, if we look at our newspapers, if we watch the, the headlines and, and watch the news, you know, and we, and we look at what is it that fills the headlines of our world today? It's politics, culture, wars, and money, economics. You know, when you think about Jesus' birth, the greatest event of human history, do you know that that didn't make a single headline either? Nobody cared. All of the biggest names, Caesar, Quinarius, all of the big powerful movers and shakers of the world, all of the powerful nations, Rome and Syria and all of these places, nobody cared. Jesus' birth didn't make a headline then, and do you know that it wouldn't make one today? As a matter of fact, if somebody did try to put it on the news today, it would be buried. It would be like the Russia hoax. Did you hear about this Jesus Savior hoax? All of those crazy people. The Christmas conversations this year will be no different than any other. They will be filled with conversations about politics, sports, entertainment, family, the kids. And there will be very little, if any, mention of the name Jesus. A Savior that has been born. Paul says in 1 Corinthians 1.14, he says, but a natural man does not accept the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him. And he cannot understand them because they are spiritually appraised or lacking. He says in 1 Corinthians 1.21, For since in the wisdom of God the world through his wisdom did not come to know God, God was well pleased through the foolishness of the message preached to save who? Those that believe. Because those that believe are the only ones that care. He says in verse 18, for the word of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved by it, it is the power of God. Without Jesus Christ, Christmas is a completely insignificant, pointless holiday devoid of any meaning whatsoever. And the world will celebrate it with gusto and it means nothing. The reality is, for the majority of people in the world celebrating Christmas, this holiday, in reality, is no different than Groundhog Day. It's no different than Valentine's Day. It is no different than Oktoberfest, or National Potato Day, or my favorite holiday, Talk Like a Pirate Day. <laughs> February 19th, for those of you that need to mark that down, is Talk Like a Pirate Day. Wonderful holiday. But think about it for a moment. When you completely remove the purpose and the meaning of the holiday, it's no different than those whatsoever. It has no real depth or meaning. It's all icing and no cake. It is void of any substance or true meaning whatsoever. Why are we surprised by it? Why are we upset by it? Why do we walk around stomping our feet saying, put Christ back in Christmas, world? It's not going to happen. They don't want him there. He shows up at their door like they showed up at the inn and they said, we don't want you here. The world says, Jesus, do not show up and ruin my holiday. It doesn't bother us because God has always used the insignificant to confound the wise. Paul says in 1 Corinthians 1.27, but God has chosen the foolish things of the world to shame the wise. And God has chosen the weak things of the world 
to shame the things which are strong. It wasn't an accident that Jesus came into the world the way that he did. He did that on purpose. Because God operates and has always operated in a way that the only ones that find him are the ones that seek him. The only ones that have Jesus in their Christmas holiday are the ones that purposefully go and say, Jesus, come in. We want you here. Because Jesus did not want to come into the world full of pomp and praise of men. What he wanted to come was for those that wanted him, that truly seek him and love him. Those that would actually put out the effort to go and find him and get him and say, Jesus, please come in. Those that don't want him, they don't have to worry about kicking him out because he's not coming in unless you want him to come in. Let's look lastly at insignificant means. See, God is not looking for insincere worship. God is not looking for the praise of men. God, God doesn't care when people say, uh, uh, well, peace on earth. Well, in my heart, you know, I kind of meant Jesus, but I didn't want to hurt anybody's feelings. You pansy. No, I mean that sincerely. If you walk around scared to open your voice and say, praise God, thank God, Jesus Christ was born today because you don't want to hurt anybody's feelings because you're ashamed of that. The Bible says God will be ashamed of you on that day. I don't care what people think of me. This is the day Jesus was born. I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm not purposely going around looking for a fight. Why are you laughing? You think that I am or something? I love to make people mad. I chase down Mormons just so I can argue with them. No, I don't do that, Brooke. I'm not looking for, you know, if that's what you want to believe, that's great. But don't ask me to hide in the closet to keep from offending you because I have just as much right to celebrate the birth of Jesus as you do to celebrate the way you believe. Unashamedly. I want to be one of the ones who seek him, who invite him in. Unashamedly. This is the day that the Lord has made. This is the day God sent His Son. This is the day that began everything that changed humanity. I don't have to go to hell. I can make heaven my home. I can have a marriage that works. I can have a family where there's joy and peace. It's interesting a statement that Jesus made in Matthew 7, 6, and it seems very aggressive. He says, do not give what is holy to dogs. Do not throw your pearls before swine, or they will trample them under their feet and turn and tear you to pieces. Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be opened. For everyone who asks, receive, and everyone who seeks, find. And to him who knocks, it will be open. He says, don't throw what is holy to dogs. Do not cast your pearls before swine. That's a very aggressive, mean statement when you think about it for just a moment. I mean, if that statement was made in our modern PC culture, I mean, people would cry and leave. Jesus is so mean. But what is he saying there? He's speaking truth. He's speaking reality. Those that hate and despise God, why am I trying to accommodate you? Because all you want to do is trample under your feet and mock. You don't love God. But guess what? It's not going to bother me one bit. Why? Why? Because when I seek, 
I find. When Jesus knocks, I open. And what is holy and right and righteous and good and moral and all of those things come into my heart, come into my life, my family, my marriage, my children, because I desire those holy things. But people that hate them and despise them, they don't care. Don't ruin my holiday with those things. You know, Jesus was not born among the rich. He was not born among the powerful nations. He was born in a manger surrounded by the smell of livestock. Look at our text. Verse 7. It says, she gave birth to her firstborn son and she wrapped him in clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them. He was born in the most insignificant town of Bethlehem. Micah 5.2 says, But as for you, Bethlehem, Ephraim, too little to be among the clans of Judah. From you, one will go forth for me to be a ruler in Israel. His goings forth are from long ago, from the days of eternity. He was raised in the poor ghetto of Nazareth in Galilee. And make no mistake, those were the rednecks. No, they were. If you were from Galilee, you know, that's like being from Kentucky. I'm sorry. And if you was from Nazareth, that was like being from the deep parts of Kentucky. And you know that's true. Because honestly, when, when, when Jesus and the, the disciples, when they traveled south, what was one of the first and amazing things that you see? They recognized that accent. Y'all ain't from around here. You're from them dumb people up north. Around here, it's down south. Right, Mary? Mary's just giving me the eye. But, but that's exactly the reality. John says in John 1, 4, 6, it says, Nathanael said to him, can anything good come out of Nazareth? John says, surely the Christ is not going to come from Galilee, is he? Search and see that no prophet arises out of Galilee. They were considered uneducated, poor, working class people. Jesus was not born among the kings and the rich and the powerful. He was born to a very poor and insignificant couple. His birth was announced to a group of shepherds. Verse 8 there were some shepherds staying out in the fields and keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord suddenly stood before them. And the angel said to them, don't be afraid, for today in the city of David is born Savior, Christ the Lord. You know, you have to realize that among the lowest of the low were the shepherds. Even among the Jewish people, shepherds were considered to be absolute and utter trash. They were. And yet, the announcement that the Savior has come came to a group of people who would have been considered the worst of the worst and the lowest of the low. Insignificant to the world. But to you and I, but to those who believe, but to those who trust in Him, it is the greatest event in all of human history. Philippians 2.5 Have this attitude in yourself, which was also in Christ Jesus, who although he existed in the form of God, did not require, or excuse me, did not regard equality with God a thing to be grasped. But he emptied himself, taking the form of a bondservant, and being made in the likeness of men, being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on the cross. For this reason also God highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name. So that the name of Jesus, at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow, of those who are in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and that every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord to the glory of God. Of God the Father. Jesus is our hope. 
Jesus is our redemption. Jesus is prophecy fulfilled. It is God himself coming in the flesh to save all of humanity. I want to close this morning. We celebrate with friends. We celebrate with family. We celebrate with food. We celebrate with gifts. You know, when you, when you think about it, the way that you and I as a believer celebrate the holiday, it, it, it's very similar to the way an unbeliever would celebrate the holiday, isn't it? It's very similar. I mean, we do all the same things. We say and a lot of the same things. We spend the day with family and friends and eating and giving gifts to one another. What is the difference? The difference is not what we do, but why we do it. It is the reason behind our gift giving it is the reason behind our celebration. We understand the significance of what the world deems to be insignificant. Every year before we unwrap presents, we read Luke chapter 2. Why? Because I love to torture my children. But because I want to make sure that my children understand this is not about food and gifts this is about Jesus. This is why we are celebrating today. That's important. Not the what, but the why. Our celebration is not simply a temporary moment of joy like it is in the world. You ever notice what a letdown Christmas can be? Yes. We build it up and build it up and build it up and we've got all the food and the presents and the this and the that and the other and then all the kids open up their presents and then we're just kind of sitting around going, now what? I guess I'll take a nap, watch a movie. Do you know why it's empty? Because we forgot the why. We can't forget the why. It's not a temporary moment of joy for you and I. It is eternal. We know without any doubt that Jesus was born into the world. We know that he sacrificed himself for our sins. We know that he is returning soon to make all things right. And we know that that time that he comes, when he returns, it's not going to be like the first time. It's not going to be in humility. It's not going to be in secret. The Bible says that every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. When he comes again, we know that he is coming as Savior and leader. We know that when he comes again, there will not be a single person who mocks or scorns. We know that he is coming to get us to take us home. We know that he is coming, like it or not, to bring judgment and a sword in the earth. And we rejoice because we are not going to be part of that judgment. When he comes, the only ones that are going to have cause to celebrate are those that love him. I want to close this morning with Hebrews chapter 2, verse 14. Therefore, since the children share in flesh and blood, he himself likewise also partook of the same, that through death he might render powerless him who had the power of death, that is the devil, and he might free those who through fear of death were subject to slavery all their lives. Why do you celebrate Jesus on Christmas? Because Jesus came to set us free. Amen. Would you bow your heads with me this morning? Just very quickly, I just want to change the order of this service here very quickly. And perhaps you're here this morning and you don't know Jesus. You don't have a relationship with Jesus. 
Perhaps you celebrate for all the wrong reasons this morning, but you want to change that and celebrate for the right reasons because Jesus can set you free this morning. If that's you, every head is bowed, every eye is closed. And I would ask you this morning to just simply lift up your hand and make an acknowledgement this morning that you want to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. I see that hand.